Hi, I'm Karan. In this video, we'll be talking about how the different conflicts that arises when it comes to the humans that have to take care of anthropods. So it's actually, this connection is about humans versus anthropods, or you can twist it around and say anthropods uh, versus humans and how they struggle. Now, people have this lo love and hate relationship with anthropods. Now, some anthropods are really important pollinators that fertilizes human crops, but some are not. So let's go ahead and learn more about those types of uh, anthropods that are harmful to us and those types of uh, anthropods that are also helpful to us. So we aren't just going one negative direction, we're also going in the positive direction. So let's go ahead and move on to the video. So like I mentioned, there's two types of uh, anthropods there. First, first type is that pollinates the human crops and second one which are the, uh, the pe pesticides which harm the crops. So let's go ahead and talk about the first one. The first, let me go ahead and use another color. The first one, which is the good one. The good fact about anthropod is that they act oops, they act like predators. And what they do is that they eventually, since they act like predators, they eat the other pests that are on that particular plant. Okay? So the second type, which are the bad type, is that they, this pests destroy crops and what they do is basically infest our homes. Okay, now you might be pondering that, well, here, it, if you have a plant, let's say like this, okay, and here there's an anthropod right here, and there is another insect right here. If the anthropod eats that insect, then the anthropod is soon going to eat the plant, right? So how is it beneficial? Well, let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, what happens is that over the period of time, the unavoidable interaction between anthropods and humans have created many conflicts, okay? Because humans are getting tired of anthropods, and anthropods felt they, they don't have feelings, but they, get, they eventually do get tired of humans as well, trying to, uh, of them trying to uh, shoo them out of the tree or plant, right? It's apple plant or pepper plant. They always come up in. Now, what happens, let me go ahead and tell you, Oops. Now, the amazing fact about anthropods is that they're herbivores, which means they eat only plants, okay? So, the anthropods right here, the anthropods are herbivores. Okay? Now, what, well, what do they eat? That's a question mark, right? What do they eat? Well, they eat the same thing, okay? Same exact thing that humans use to eat, human use to uh, use for textile, for textile, the second point, the first point, and the third thing that humans use for building materials. So this is what anthropod basically eats, okay? Now, since they're herbivores, they can do much damage to the human surrounding than if they were carnivores, because if they were carnivores, they would just go on and keep eating other insects, and that would make the less population of other insects. But since they are herbivores, what do they eat? Well, they basically eat the, whatever the human says, well, whatever we eat, that's the first thing. Whatever we use for textile, that's the third, second thing. The third thing is whatever we use for building materials, okay? Such as wood or anything such along those lines. Any building materials, that's what they eat. Now, anthropod basically, even after that, since 
anthropod basically compete well with human for the same resources because because human wants more of this resources and more of this use resources and that's what human wants and also 70% of this resources because 30% as you guys can see we can rely on meat if there was no uh, herbivorous food or left to us but though 70% that's a pretty huge number out of 3 billion people among the world that's a pretty large number 70% of humans basically eat plants uh, which are herbivorous green plants but 30% they they usually eat meat so they don't care if there's no green plants or anything they, they all they care about their meat okay now Humans basically want this type of resources. Now the same resources is what anthropod wants. So they are basically competing against each other. Now, because there are more anthropods than humans, there is a there is a competition which is stiff, which you will just look at the video right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the video. Now, like we said, because there are more anthropods than humans, there is a, a stiff competition. Like for example. When you look uh, under the leaves of an apple tree or let's say the pepper tree, so there's two trees, apple tree and pepper tree, you may see clusters of tiny bumps. Now these bumps are insects called aphides. Now aphides, these are anthropods, okay? So aphides, like shown in this figure, you, what they do is they, they use their needle-like mouth parts to pierce the cell wall of the plant and suck up the sugary liquid inside. Now a single aphide, like the, this one for example, only just one, it's small and cannot do much damage on its own. But when you have like, uh, but aphids live in large colonies, right? So when you have like hundreds of uh, aphids on a plant, they can remove enough sap to damage or to kill the plant. So this is how there is a competition between how humans consume their food and how anthropods consume their food. Now because anthropods are more in population, they tend, uh, they tend to compete with humans. Now you can see how much damage can each anthropod do and how much damage can a group of anthropods can do. So let's go and ask ourselves this question on how much damage can they basically do to us. Now how much damage they by saying how much damage they can do to us is basically taking our resources that we want away from us. Now each year this is estimation okay so whatever I say this is estimated. Now each year Okay. Each year, they tend to destroy millions of dollars, millions of dollars uh, in damaging the crops. Okay, this is for each year. Now, what they do is basically, what type of crops do they damage? Well, it's not apple plants or pepper plants the we're talking about crops here well the crops they usually damage is corn wheat and cotton so is there any way you can prevent this from happening of course there is so what like we don't have to actually interact with anthropods each and every day but guess what who has to well farmers who actually own their own land and have their whole life uh, growing the plants and expo for their cash crops what happens is they always have to interact with uh, anthropods in their lives now how do we how do they actually now if you imagine someone if you're building something up and someone is just Taking, taking away from pieces, you would be actually mad at them. Same with the case. Now, this is the reason why it says human versus anthropod. Whatever the farmers are growing, the anthropods are basically eventually destroying them now, because there are more anthropods than human beings, okay? So they take their advantage of more population. Now, what happens is that whenever they, they, uh, they tend to destroy a crop, what farmer did is that Back in the days, they made, uh, they came up uh, with something insecticides. Okay, so we're talking about what can you 
do to prevent this? So what can you do? Well, what you can do is basically they use insecticides. Now what it does is it controls, okay, it controls their overgrowing. Population. Population. Okay, so if you don't know what insecticide is, let's go ahead and take a look at what insecticide is. Now that you know what insecticide is, now, like we said before, what, do, what can you do about to prevent this? We said we can use insecticide. But we recall that nothing in this world is basically perfect. So insecticides, what they tend to do is basically they tend to harm us as well. Now how? Well, insecticides, what they have is they can contain this type of toxic that is not only harmful to animals and by animals I'm actually talking about the anthropods they are, they not only harm the animals but also humans now for example some of the insecticides are that you may have heard of are known as DDT or they might just known as chloridin. Now this are type of insecticides that you spray on a particular plant like a, uh, apple plant or pepper plant so you can kill the kill the anthropods that are on them okay to make it more uh, secure to make the plant more secure otherwise the whole cell wall would be destroyed as we talked in the video now what happens is that after uh, this this type of chemicals since they are made up of chemicals and now since they are known as insecticides whenever they are being sprayed on something they, they contain this type of toxic which kills the anthropods and not only that it's whenever we get a food from market we see well, we see the label that wash before you eat now it's only the reason we, because uh, that plant, whatever that uh, fruit or uh, any vegetable that has come out from, it has been sprayed the insecticide. Now there is also known as pesticide which prevents pests, but that's completely different than insecticide. So don't confuse those two. Though their function is the same, to remove the insects. So this toxic, whenever we eat this, uh, we eat this we, it tends to harm our body. So now to avoid the potential uh, ha harmful events of using insecticides and what the scientists have done is basically discovered ways to use the unique characteristics of anthropods to find safer ways of controlling pest population so what do they mean they were actually what they do is basically scientists now are basically going to characterize the anthropods uh, anthropods characteristics Okay, they're gonna identify find them and basically come out with something that only harms them, not us. So this is what their goal is and anthropods are basically something like we said uh, that humans want to get rid of. So this is the reason why they're working on this. Scientists are basically trying to build this up. Now, let's go ahead and see three effects of what anthropod can do to us or three advantages that they can do to us. So let's go ahead and look at that. Now, 
and insecticides can be developed to be specific uh, to anthropods. Now, one example of that would be neurotoxic that blocks the particular receptor that is common in anthropods' nerve but are not found in animals' nerve. Now, the second point is that integrated pest management or IPM reduces the number of insects pests on a plant crop by managing their ecology. Now, by using a variety of other methods, including insect traps, physical barriers, and introduction to predators such as ladybugs and parasitic webs, IPM also helps to control pest, uh, pest species. Now, genetically modified plants can be made to uh, resist particular pest species. Now, example for that would be Bt corn. Now, Bt corn basically has been engineered to include the gene from the soil bacteria, which is known as Bactericulus thuringiensis, which are artificial, artificially inserted into its DNA. It's also known as genetic uh, duping or genetic engineering. Now, what it does is basic, basically makes a gene, makes a protein that kills caterpillar pests such as European corn borer, bore, which is harmless to most other animals, but they can actually harm the animals that are destroying the plants. So they actually introduce to, uh, in insect predators, basically in insect, but do not harm the plant. So this is how the, th this is how the whole process works of removing the anthropods from the plant, and it's used by the farmers.